Hello everyone, I am Sayed Said Husseini from Smart Energy Research and Innovation Laboratory at the University of Quebec at Trois-Rivières. Today I am here to share with you our recent study on non-intrusive load monitoring in collaboration with Hydro Quebec Research Institute, entitled A Case Study on Obstacles to Feasible NIL Solutions for Energy Disaggregation in Quebec Residences. As we know, a smart grid paradigm enables a smart home concept as the vision to household smart readiness through which an advanced sensing and measurement system in demand side is realized. This system empowers an automation network throughout the house, which yields appliance load monitoring system to listen to household appliances electricity flow. The non-intrusive approach of appliance load monitoring is acknowledged to have more advantages over intrusive one for power grid services. It brings about an opportunity for utility to capture energy saving potentials and customers to receive rewards through collaboration regarding a collective success. It is also crucial to energy transition objectives in the Quebec residential sector with a, consider with a considerable amount of electricity consumption. From a practical standpoint, smart meters are the key element towards residential cost-effective energy saving opportunities through the new concept. Considering the element for a practical solution to arrive to appliance level information as the mission of NIL, smart meters uh, offer one of the most convenient solutions. However, the technical features of smart meters advertise the utilization of low sampling NIL methods. The basic research mainly focuses on analyzing data with fine granularity. Regardless of the method, the underlying motive for such a focus is in fact electrical properties of the public data sets. In Quebec, by the way, the residential power consumption behavior cannot be exemplified by existing data sets due to the type of in-use appliances. Generally, the Quebec case includes appliances with challenging operational trajectories dissimilar across the season that critically alter in lower sampling sizes. Here is a case that we show the summer and winter result for the 15 minute sampling rate. You can see here the high presence of electric water heater with a huge amount of electricity consumption brings about a very similar pattern to the aggregated load, such a, way, such a way that the other major loads cannot be observed. The situation becomes worse in winter when we add eight to 10 electric space heater to the aggregated signal, and this is the result. As we can see that the, the trajectory, trajectories of low power appliances cannot be easily recognized. And also in a low sampling, led, uh, low sampling interval, the other major loads combined with the space heater bring about very challenging signal for NIL. In here, the heat channel, each heat channel, uh, I should note that it stands for two space heaters. This challenging scenario necessitates conducting geographically relevant NIL research that exploits data from smart meter readings in order to discover actual barriers towards feasible solutions. This is the intention of this study where we try to, to practice a low sampling rate, a low sampling NIL pertinent to the case of Quebec that first disaggregate electric space heater and after other loads in a successive manner. In fact, removing a space heater from overall signal can assist with treating its residual. It's still challenging with common NIL methods. This is supported by a seasonality analysis that we have done on the data that I'm showing for two cases here. As you can see, the pattern and the value of a specifically trend of the total demand and heating demand are very similar. This can be also seen in seasonality. However, we should note that the different, the different share of the space heater in the aggregated signal can change the, its role in the seasonality of the data. By the way, this similar behavior supports a method that intends first to remove the space heaters from the aggregated signal. I should note that the residual uh, behavior shows here a big amount of information that is unpredictable in the signal. So therefore, this uh, successive analysis is, is, uh, is aimed through a combination of supervised and unsupervised algorithms. The former employs long short-term memory networks as a deep learning model that is capable of capturing long-term temporal dependencies, while the latter is unsupervised algorithm 
utilizes density-based clustering algorithm uh, methods capable of time series data collection. This is shown through this block diagram here. Particularly, the clustering phase takes advantage of the DBS scan method, in which the hyperparameter, specifically the epsilon, are, st are estimated by means of the optic algorithm. In fact, optic is able to offer the clustering structure, the cluster uh, structure in the data. Therefore, it is useful for for such analysis, but not directly because in the date challenging data and complicated data, this method can be numerically unstable. This is the reason we have used the optics to set the hyperparameters of the DBS scan. Here we are showing the result of the of the proposed approach for one houses in Quebec, one house in Quebec. I should note that the, for other houses that we tried, the results are similar. So we decided to show for one house the results in more details to have a more fruitful analysis. As you can see, the results are shown here for one week, for one house. The, and also we show uh, uh, the load profile result for the space heater. We can see that the percentage of the, of the load that has been correctly assigned is more than 80%. This is the acceptable, acceptable result according to the new literature, as it is more than 80%. However, for the other metrics, they should be analyzed comparatively. The mean absolute error should be analyzed with regard to the share of the space heater and the aggregated signal, since we, are case, we have cases in Quebec that the share and the, the amount of the space heating uh, overall load can reach up to 10 kilowatt. However, the result of the mean square error shows a deviation from the regression line. This signals an issue that is going to be handed down to the next level. What is that issue? What it signifies? It signifies inadequacy in capturing the peaks and also unwanted variations in lower demands that after extraction are significant concerns that pass along to the next step. We can observe that here, where we show the total load the actual residual and estimated residual. You can see the variations in the estimated residual in the low demand and also insufficiency in capturing the total uh, heating consumption peaks. The situation becomes worse when I present you this figure where we show the actual residual, estimated residual, and also the domestic load. You can see here between the difference of the domestic load and other profiles, a huge amount of unknown load in the signal of the Quebec date, in the signal of the house. The, this is not in the scope of this analysis, but we know that the presence of the M unknown load is the principal challenge for NIL methods. So how we, what are the things that's through uh, this analysis that we need to deal with? In fact, the first is the limited amount of, the, of data for learning. For this analysis, I should note that we had just one winter data to train and test or deep learning uh, method. The impact of heating demand on overall overall usage as, the na as their nature is another issue that will be uh, add to that the pattern that mainly the sudden and large fluctuations of the heating of the heating loads uh, in the in the aggregated signal. So considering these issues, we treat the next step as mentioned, with density-based clustering techniques to capture operation sequences of possible appliances as, uh, through DBS scan and optic algorithms. I have shown you how these issues that we discussed can affect the next step. Here you can see that DBS scan uh, applied to the actual domestic load. You can see that we have uh, clear, uh, the clear clusters uh, here in the signal, especially for the uh, for the low demand, uh, for the low demand, and here we apply to the same day the, the, the residual that we found through the analysis, the estimated domestic. You can see how the the variation and fluctuation in the clusters, specifically in the low power consumption, that somehow shows that what we are going to find in low power demand is not valid and is not trustable as a cluster. So how we can see the uh, the, the clustering, the, the comparison between the, these two cases shows really the impact of the issues. By the way, we went through the, uh, the, the second step to 
to look for the construction of the major appliances and to see that what will stand for the actual appliances as the cluster uh, in the remaining signal. In fact, the electric level, in fact, generally, to say the electric space heater estimation error, resultant fluctuations, and online usage lead to creating impractical clusters, as we have seen in the previous slide, with Y variants that rarely stand for actual devices. This is the reason what we have constructed out actual loads here that stand for actual appliances are for high demand. However, what we can see with the result of the clustering is three important things. The first is the notable loads advertise very similar behavior, such a way that their separation is almost impossible. You can see here for electric water heater and stove and also dryer. The second thing is that the behavior of, of, of of an appliance change within consecutive intervals. You can see here for electric water heater, this is because of the, uh, one of the reason is the low sampling analysis that we are doing. And the second thing is the increase of the overlapping uh, incident, incidents in the, in the signal that result in this situation. However, as you can see, there are, uh, there are days in that, that the clustering has been able to capture a load for only as electric water heater as the actual appliance. So we use that days to go through more through the analysis and look for the accuracy of the of the method. As you can see from the result, we could define the electric water heater with around 60%, which is a fair result considering the issues that has been have been handed down and we discussed throughout the, the presentation. And this together shows the, the barriers in the with the Quebec signals when we look for a, a for a load monitoring analysis by the information of a single entry point. At the end, we present a practical analysis to reveal new obstacles faced in Quebec residences. Considering the strong patterns of electric space heaters, high than Markov models, and Convolutional neural network based sequence to point deep learning methods as the unsupervised and supervised method have been suggested for the continuation of this analysis. Also, from a general standpoint, a full supervised or unsupervised method has been also suggested for the continuation of this study to deal with the issues that we have explained. An improvement to the domestic load disaggregation can be made by exploiting exploring the spatial and temporal basis. This is an analysis that we did for the pattern for, uh, of the data to be used for the load segregation. This has been done as the uh, for this study previously, and we are going to develop this more. In fact, to be more specific, what is going to be intended in the next step is the utilization of data with higher sampling frequency, and also looking for advanced machine learning algorithm to improve the whole uh, efficiency and accuracy of the NIL method, uh, which is pertinent to the case of Quebec. Thank you very much for your attention, and, and I wish you a very nice time.